Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be learning how to launch a manual transmission vehicle and for this video I am going to be in the 2016 Volkswagen Golf R. Now we're going to work through the different steps and talk about you know some of the different situations you may be in in order to optimize your 0 to 60 launch as well as kind of how this system works in order to understand how to get a better time. And so the first step, and by far the easiest, all you're going to do is press in the clutch. And so you're going to want to be on a flat surface uh, so that you're not rolling around anywhere, at least for the start of this. You want a nice flat surface so the vehicle remains stationary as you press in the clutch, even without your foot on the brake. So that's step number one. Step number two is applying throttle. And this is probably the most tricky of the entire thing. So what you're going to do here is apply throttle and you're pretty much going to hold a set RPM and that's going to be based on many different parameters. So if you have a very high torque engine, then you're going to use a lower RPM. If you have a very low torque engine, typically with smaller engines, then you're going to use a higher RPM. Now how much throttle you apply also depends on if the vehicle is front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. Front will require the least amount of torque in order to spin the tires, so you can use a lower RPM, but keep in mind the size of your engine. Now rear wheel drive can handle a little bit more, so you may go higher, but once again, you know rear wheel drive vehicles tend to be more powerful, so you can use a slightly lower RPM. And then all wheel drive vehicles are able to put down the most power without a doubt, and so you can get really high RPM uh, without you know sacrificing uh, the wheel spinning too much. So because you've got a ton of grip, you can use a ton of power. And so with all-wheel drive systems, typically you're going to be using the highest RPM uh, possible. You know, you can be up in the 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 RPM range. Whereas for a very powerful, let's say, you know, V8 uh, muscle car, something like that, you may only need like 2,500 RPM uh, in order to get those rear tires to spin uh, if you go above that. So it's all about making sure you don't have those rear tires spinning, but you put down as much power as possible to accelerate into it. Now there's other factors to take into consideration as well. So if it's raining outside, clearly you're going to have less traction, so you use a lower RPM. Another thing that's interesting is if you have a turbocharged engine. So with a turbocharged engine, um, basically if you hold it at a set RPM, you're not going to be building any boost unless you have an anti-lag system. And so most cars don't come equipped with these. And so because of that, one way to kind of trick yourself uh, out of this scenario is build it up to maybe two or 3,000 RPM, then floor it. That gives resistance to the turbocharger builds up exhaust and as you're flooring it then you'll move on to the next step where you release the clutch and so that allows for you to build a little bit of boost and give you a little bit more torque to put down rather than just holding it at a set rpm now you have to time that really well in order for it to work right um, so it could be easier just to hold it at maybe 5,000, 6,000 rpm let's say you're in an all-wheel drive turbocharged vehicle let the clutch out and then go from there Okay, so moving on to point number three, and this is where my props come in handy. So we've got a clutch and a pressure plate. So we have our clutch pressed in, which means uh, this is you know, not in contact with the pressure plate. We've now applied throttle. So this is going to be spinning with our flywheel. So this is gonna be spinning at the RPM that you see on your tachometer. And so now you have a difference in speed because this is of course stationary as it's attached to your wheels and first gear. So now what you wanna do is release this. And actually I have this oriented uh, the wrong direction but anyways you're going to have this come in here and so you're going to want to smoothly uh, but fairly quickly release that clutch now if you do it too fast uh, you'll notice what will happen is it'll bog down the engine and what can happen is if you slam these together and you don't break your tires you're going to put all that strain uh, onto your drivetrain and so the best case scenario if you do it too quickly is that you just spin your tires uh, the worst case scenario is you actually break something within your drivetrain so you don't want to do it too fast uh, but you also don't want to do it too slow either so if you do it too slow what happens is this just starts spinning you start burning up your clutch and you're not putting that power down onto the ground so a nice smooth but fairly quickly release that so you have a nice easy pressure engage onto that clutch disc it brings it up to speed and then you start accelerating okay so that was step number three smoothly but quickly releasing your clutch and this leads us on to number four which is as we're releasing that clutch as it starts to grab, you want to start to ease into the throttle. So as you go into the release the clutch, you're easing into the throttle so that you're accelerating once that clutch starts to grab. Now there's a couple things that can happen here. So let's say you have wheel spin. Well, it means you're either using uh, too much RPM initially when you're holding the throttle, or you're getting into that throttle too quick when you start to release the clutch, or for example, you're releasing that clutch too quickly. And so any three of those can cause it uh, the wheels to spin. 
Now on the other side, let's say you release the clutch, you don't get any wheel spin at all. Well, it's probably possible to get a slightly faster launch. And so you're gonna to wanna to give it a little bit more throttle, uh, not only hold it at a higher RPM, but give it throttle quickly uh, as you start to release that clutch and make sure you're releasing the clutch quick enough so you're not just burning up the clutch uh, and instead you're putting that power to the ground. Okay, well let's say you give it plenty of throttle and you release that clutch fairly slowly. If you see high RPMs but you're not actually accelerating, so your RPMs are way up, you've let the clutch out completely and your speed isn't really moving much, what's happening is you're just burning up your clutch. And so you don't want to be doing that, you want to make sure that you're actually accelerating rather than just burning up your clutch. So in that scenario, you're going to want to use less throttle initially. And you're probably going to want for your clutch to cool off so it can actually grab. Okay, so now we've worked through the first four steps in order to get the vehicle moving. We've pressed in the clutch, we've applied throttle and held that at a set RPM, we've released the clutch smoothly but quickly, and then we've modulated the throttle after releasing that clutch in order to control wheel spin and get the vehicle going. So now we need to move on to step number five. What comes next? Well, we need to change gears. So for the gear shift, uh, you know, it will depend basically on the mapping of the engine, the torque curve, that in itself is a topic for a whole different video. Uh, a good rule of thumb that you can go with is to just carry it out all the way to redline and then shift gears. So why do I say carry it out all the way to redline? Well, you have to look at the torque characteristics of the transmission and the engine. And with most vehicles, you're put at a huge gearing disadvantage each time you step a gear down. So when you go from first to second, you lose torque through gearing. So your wheel torque is going to be less. Now in the Volkswagen Golf R, which we're in, there's a 60% difference in the gear ratio between first and second gear. So that means 60% less wheel torque once we go down to second gear from first. And so even if the engine tapers off quite a bit at the end of its torque curve and the higher RPM, as long as it doesn't drop between uh, beneath 60% less, then we're still at an advantage uh, being in first gear rather than dropping down to second gear. And for example, this Golf R, it carries peak torque. It's actually pretty amazing from 1800 RPM to 5500 RPM with redline at about 6500 RPM. And so that means in 1000 RPM, you need to lose 60% of the torque, which I don't believe will be happening. And so because of that, you know, it's beneficial to just shift from first to second, go all the way to redline, go to redline line again in second and then shift to third and so on you know depending on how much distance you have how long your straight is whether you're doing a quarter mile or whatever and so uh, from a gearing standpoint typically it's always going to be beneficial in a manual transmission to just take it all the way out to redline okay so we'll get a zero to 60 launch in i've got the traction control off so that that won't interfere at all we'll come to a stop hold the clutch down rpm up to about 5,000, a little past 5,000 rpm let the clutch out, and there's 61. So I might have been able to let the clutch out a little bit quicker, other than that it seemed to do pretty well, um, and I shifted a little late on the end of second gear there, ran it out a bit too far, um, but it looks like it did pretty well, and the reason why I left it in second up until red line, uh, second gear actually takes it past 60, so you saw at the end there it read 61, um, so I wanted to see maximum acceleration to 60, so I left it in second gear there. Uh, but overall, I think that was pretty good. A uh, little tweaking with the start and a little tweaking with the shift, and it'd be slightly quicker. Bring the revs a little over 2,000. Okay, let's get a nice highway pull in here. Now getting the launch perfect will probably take several attempts because not only do you have to adjust for how your specific car behaves, but you also have to adjust for ambient conditions. So you may have to try several times in order to get it down just right. And for those of you curious to know how much of an effect this downhill on-ramp has on the zero to 60 time, I have created a separate video uh, to demonstrate and test how much of an effect that downhill grade has. And certainly worth mentioning, if you don't want bad stuff to happen to your transmission and your drivetrain, then you probably should never launch your vehicle, as it's very easy for it to cause damage. You're going to have a lot of clutch wear, uh, and you could easily damage your transmission components if you don't actually have the wheel slip or the clutch slip, and they take the brute of that force. And so have fun, uh, enjoy yourself, be safe, 
And thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about heel and toe downshifting, what it is and why it's done. So first we're gonna talk about the process itself, how it's done, and then we're gonna look inside your transmission and talk about why this is done. And really, this is used to downshift uh, while you're on the brakes. So let's say you're coming into a corner, you're on the brakes, you wanna downshift so you can exit that corner.